This is the most basic wrap I've been using to make necklaces for like five years now. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of necklaces with this pattern and it literally takes five minutes to make a necklace with this pattern once you get it down. But there are like dozens of variations on it. So you can make each necklace look a little bit different, but it balances the elegance and the simplicity with any stone that's drilled straight through top to bottom. So I'm sharing this with you now. This is probably one of the best tutorials of all the ones I've done. If you really wanna make some really nice necklaces, very simply, very easily, in a way that will still look really elegant and nice. So you can make a whole bunch and fill up your booth at a show or whatever, give them to friends and family. So here it goes, this is the secret. And I'm gonna show you like five variations on it too. I'm gonna to use today Blue Appetite, this kind of peach, orangey, brown agate. Black onyx, mother of pearl that has a slight bit of a wine color dyed to it, and this really cute amethyst teardrop here. But any stone that's drilled straight through top to bottom, this tutorial is gonna work for you. You wanna use 20 gauge or 18 gauge. Check your stone first and make sure the hole can take the gauge that you pick. I usually will, on a large stone, will use 18 if it'll take it, but 20 is pretty standard. 20 usually fits most stones. And if I have a very small stone, this is getting kind of on the small side. If I go even smaller, then I will at times use 22 gauge, which is even thinner. So I can get those little patterns in there in the same way. All of these are gonna be variations of the same pattern. Basically, I'm gonna cut a piece of wire that's about two to three feet. So up to one meter in length. And you can play around with the length as you make a bunch of them, but I suggest you just make as many as possible. First step is to put the stone right in the middle of the wire, so you have an equal amount on both sides. Give or take, it doesn't have to be exact, but as close as you can get it to the middle. Next thing you're gonna do is bend the wire at a 90 degrees like this, going this way and then going that way. Of obviously beforehand pick which part of the stone you want to be the front and which you want to be the top and bottom. Once you get it like this, the top, you're going to bend into your loop, which will become part of your bale, and so you're gonna bend it like this and then you're gonna twist it 180 degrees to really lock it in. Then you're gonna come down with your wire like this. This wire is gonna bend up and these two are gonna cross each other somewhere in the bottom. It could be in the corner, it could be directly in the bottom, doesn't matter. I usually put it kind of in the corner and they're gonna start wrapping around each other to make a spiral. You can go around as many times as you want and then at this point is where you can do variations. The easiest way is to just come right up to the top and then do what I call scarfing it, which is wrap the ends around the loop like that. And then when you have two ends, cut them off halfway across and tuck them into this little bowl shape that you made by wrapping it. And then the sharp ends are tucked in, everything is tight, everything is secure, and your necklace is ready to go. Then you can turn your loop a quarter turn, put a quarter chain through it, or you can do what I like to do, which is add a few jump rings. I like to add three and then put your chain cord and that kind of gives it like an extra pattern the jump rings kind of mirror your scarf there so that's the simplest way to do it I'm gonna show you that now we'll use the amethyst for this because it's the smallest and we don't have to do as much of a pattern on it so in this case I'm only gonna take about a foot and a half about 18 inches or half a meter and you're probably not even gonna use that much Bring the stone to the middle of your wire. One of the easiest ways is to just bring the two ends together and then pull and see how close it is to the middle. That's I'm eyeballing it, that's close enough for me. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we bend and bend these two at a right angle going in opposite directions like that. Now, you can wrap it around your round nose pliers or a pen. I do it right around my finger because it's just, I'm not trying to be perfect. It just tends to come out right. I just wrap it like this and I make a loop like this, a little upside down teardrop loop. I get it a little bit bigger than the size I want. And once you have the loop shape kind of forming, you can just kind of roll it till you get it the size you want. Now I leave it a little bit bigger than the size I want. And then I give it a 180 twist, holding everything in together like that. And that locks it in. Now I have these two ends. And I fold this one up, I fold this one down. I'm gonna connect them wherever I wanna put the swirl, in this case, in the little corner here. So this is right where they're gonna cross, like this. Do a little bit, move one end, then move the other. Move one end, then move the other. 
and they start to make a spiral. You can make the spiral really tight or you can have it loose where you can see the stone in between the curves of the spiral. I like to make my spiral a little bit loose because I like to see the stone peeking through. And then once you have enough of a spiral, this went around only about one and a half times and that's fine. It balances with the size of the stone and everything. Then I take these two strands and I have them either dance together or dance separately and sometimes I'll have them go around the back of the stone and come back up the front, but eventually the goal is to get them to wrap around the top loop, which scarfs it. So in this case, I'm going to show you the most simple one. I'm just going to press my thumb tight. They're just going to separate a little bit, and then they're going to come back together and just make a very simple, elegant curve like this, and that's it. And then they're going to curve back. And again, you can curve as many times as you want, up and back, but this is just the simplest one, and it, it'll, it still looks very elegant on this and I, I'll play with them too. I'll push and pull to get them, you know, to be on the part of the stone I want them to be and to curve the way I want. But that just comes with practice. So I suggest you just make a bunch of these and don't stress if your first one doesn't look exactly the way you want it to. So then we start wrapping it around the top loop and we wrap the two ends together, which I call scarfing it. It's like the little top loop is a face. We give it a scarf. I wrap it around till it's about halfway up. And so this, I could stop or I could keep going I'm about halfway up, so I'll stop here. I bend these up on an angle, take my pliers, halfway across I cut it. So then I have these little tabs sticking up. And I take the pliers and I bend them into the little bowl here and then shove them down in the bowl, just like this. Bend them towards the middle of the bowl so they're hovering over it and then turn and push them down and boom, they're done. So that's the simplest one. See how elegant and simple it is? And we're going to take the same pattern and we're going to do some variations. This stone is shaped a little different, but it doesn't matter because it's flat and it's drilled straight through top to bottom. And that's all that matters. So again, we're going to do the same thing where we bend it, make the loop, and then twist the loop to lock it in. We bend this side up like this, and then this comes around like so. This comes around, and then we start having them dance around each other to make the swirl. And then at some point, we're going to go across like this. And instead of going straight up to the loop, we're going to go around the back. So we're going to fold both of these across over the top like this. We're going to go behind the back, come back up the front like this, and then come around and scarf it. Make the two tabs, tuck them in, and we're done. So see how this gives it like kind of a unique pattern. And actually, I'm going to bend this loop even up on a different angle like that. So it gives it more of a, a whimsical feel. And we're going to come around the back. And there's one little trick. We don't just come straight around the back. I'm going to show you. There's a trick to anchor it so it's more secure. So this time, again, I'm only going to take a little more than 18 inches. Not much more, though. The sideward part of the stone is the front and back, top and bottom, put it through, find the middle, bend, bend, make your loop. I let the loop lean over to this side a little bit because when I twist it, it's going to go right center. See how that works? Now pick where you want the swirl to form, start bending them across until they cross each other, boom, that's where the center of the swirl is going to be. And now we just follow them around as many times as you want. If you have thicker wire, you might want to do less of a swirl because it covers a lot of the stone. Um, but whatever you prefer, it doesn't matter. You can also press it like this and twist if you want to get a real tighter swirl. Or if you want to, if you come around too many times, you feel like it's too, too big, you want to tighten it up, press it and tighten it, okay? And this time I'm going to go I'm going to have this one bend up about like this, and this one arc up at a higher arc like this. But they're just going to go across like this. Now, I would, I normally would just go right across to the other side, but these are flimsy and able, able to be snagged later on. So what I do right here to make them stronger is I bring them together like an X. I twist them a couple times. I let whichever one is facing up at that point come around and grab onto the top loop. And then I bring it straight back down and give them another couple twists. This locks everything in, so now this is not snaggable. Nothing is moving, especially when we come around again. 
it makes it extra secure on the stone. So now we're gonna take these two strands, separate them again as they come around the other side, and we're gonna again have them do a, an arc just like the here, but it's gonna be going the opposite way. So we're gonna put a little bend in your wire like this, and then position it where you want it, hold it tight, and let it start to wrap around. Don't let these wires twist. They'll keep trying to twist. Try to keep them side by side and hold everything tight and start to wrap your scarf. And that's another version to do it. And then when you're about halfway up, cut your tabs, tuck them in. And there you have it. You can also play around with these curves afterwards if you don't like where they ended up on the stone, especially with thinner gauge. You can press with your fingernail, you can move them. You can also come back here and you can crimp and have things move depending on where you want them. See how it moves in the front. Try not to mess with it too much. Sometimes you'll end up messing the curve up and it'll look all square and wonky. But in general, you'll start to get the feel for it. Or you know what? Do play around with it. Do mess it up. Because the more you mess it up, the more you learn what works and what doesn't work. So, and you're going to be making a bunch of these if you're serious. Because first of all, it's fun. And second of all, you get better every time. And you learn more and you get more confident. So that's another simple pattern like that. Now, once you get these two patterns down, now you can start to have some real fun. For this orangey pink and brown teardrop agate, again, we're going to do the same thing. Bring the stone to the middle of the wire. Make your loop. Twist it to lock it in. Make this side come up like this. Have this side come down like this. Make your spiral. But this time, we're going to have these two strands come out. This one's going to go around behind it. And this one is going to come up to the top. Do a little curve. Lock around once. And then go down behind the back of the stone. We're going to cross them behind the stone, as I'll show you, and then we're going to come up the other side and have some fun. We're going to come up the other side, do a loop-de-loop -loop with both of them. They'll start to get tighter. We'll do another loop-de-loop -loop like this, an even tighter one, and then we'll come up and scarf it. So now we're starting to have some fancier designs, and this is where it just opens up, and you can do so many different things as long as you follow this pattern. It all depends on the size of your wire, the size of your stone, and how confident you are in pulling little tiny loop-de-loops into different places. So let's do this one. This time we're going to take a little bit more wire, closer to two feet, maybe a little, maybe even two and a half, depending on the size of your stone. You don't, in the beginning, you want to take a little bit too much wire. You don't want to run out by accident. Put it through. Bring the stone to the middle of the wire. Bend, bend, make your loop. Make sure it's tight. Roll it in, fold it in half. Now, fold this down, fold this up. Pick the corner where we're gonna put the spiral. I usually put, the, put it right in, I keep my spiral, my first spiral in that same corner, that's just me. You could do it really anywhere. You could, you could have the spiral up at the top. You can do endless designs you know, once you start getting some of these patterns down. But I'm just showing you what I find works the best. And feel free to copy this. I don't mind. I want you to guys to copy it and sell a bunch of amazing handmade necklaces because that'll make me happy. Much better that you make them than that people keep buying machine-made stuff that all looks the same and boring. So come around with your spiral as many times as you want. Now, this time, like I said, this strand is going to go make a nice arcing loop like that, like a rainbow, and come around back and just hang out for a minute. This one is going to pretend to follow, but nope, it's going to curve this way, like that. And then it's going to curve back this way. And then it's going to wrap around the top loop, go hide behind the back, so we end up with this. Now, that right there could end it, and that's a pretty simple wrap, but it's pretty. But we're going to do more. We're going to take these two guys, cross them. Always good to cross your wires whenever you can, especially in the back where people don't see, because it strengthens everything. It's good to twist them. We're going to give them two twists like that. And then we're going to come back up this side. And this is good because now your wire is pulling from four directions. And that makes everything secure on your stone so it doesn't move around and get snagged. Come back up the front here. And now you have a choice. You can do an underhanded loop or an overhanded loop. I think 
I'm going to do an overhanded loop because that's what I showed you in the drawing. And it looks like it'll fit really nicely in this little area. So we're going to come around like this, start to bring the wires together. So they were separate, and now they're coming together. Think of them like little ice skaters, like an ice skating pair. They separate, and then they come back together to skate together. And then they separate, and then they come back together. So here they did a little loop-de-loop -loop and grabbed hands. And you could finish it right here. You could bring these up to the top and scarf it. And that would be, again, very elegant, but we're going to add even more. Now we're running out of space, so I'm going to move this over because I want more room here. I'm going to move this down. See that? Now I have even more room. And I kind of flattened my curve there, so you can mess with it and try to get your curve back. Try to make it a little, just move it little parts, try to make it more elegant. See, it's starting to come back. You get the hang of that as you mess with it more. And if you, if you totally mess it up, don't feel bad. Just have fun. Now I have more room. I'm going to push this curve further down like this. And then I'm going to reverse direction, have it go this way. See that? And now I'm going to make an even tinier curve at the bottom. I mean, at the top. So we have this kind of pattern going on where we have big swirl, medium loop, small loop as it builds its way up just like the shape of the teardrop is fat at the bottom and then it slowly gets smaller as it makes its way up. Uh, and forgive me if I paint on my fingers, I was just painting, but anyway. Come back up and now you can make this a dramatic curve or a simple curve. It really depends on what you want to do. I'm going to make it a little bit dramatic like that and have it wrap around. Start to scarf it. Hold everything tight and the scarf begins. And again, you can scarf it as many times as you want. That's a little bit more than halfway, that's fine. Cut it. Tuck. Boom. Our next way, let's just look at the progression here. Simple, a little fancier, quite a bit fancier. But it's really all the same pattern. Let's do another one. On this black agate, I'm going to again bring the stone to the middle of the wire, make my loop, fold this up, come around, make my swirl. This time I'm going to have the two ends separate. One's going to come around like this, like before. The other one's going to come all the way around in an arc like this, wrap around the top, go in the back, and then the two will connect. Then they'll come back around and do a similar pattern to the last one. We'll do a loop-de-loop, -loop, and then we'll do another loop-de-loop. -loop. And if we have room, maybe we'll do even something else. And then we'll scarf it, and so it goes. This one folds around the back. This one, I'm going to stretch it out here and give it a nice curve. Nice curve like that, because this one is going to go around this side like that. So we have it framing both sides of the stone. And we're going to wrap it around the top loop, then we're going to meet them in the back, do that thing where they cross so they strengthen everything, and come back up the front. And this time we have a lot of room to play with. We have this whole open area. So what can we do? We can start with a loop like this. We can roll that loop tighter and tighter. Sometimes just grab one strand and pull it tighter. That makes the inside of the loop get tighter while the outside can still remain wider. And then come around like this, press it tight against the stone, give it another loop. Maybe put that loop over here. We're kind of painting the stone. We're, we're, the stone is like our canvas and now we're just doing painty swirls across the stone, filling up the canvas with all kinds of designs. And you can also press the loops to get them to move. If you want them tighter, or you want to move them somewhere. But look, we have room. We can, let's do another one. Let's make it even tighter. See that? We're building slightly smaller and smaller as we move our way up. Now we're going to come up to the top, dramatic finish, and scarf it. And this is still 
not even barely two feet of wire. So when I said two to three feet, you really don't even need that much. You'll find how much you need as you go along, but in the beginning you might want to take a little extra just to be on the safe side. For my last one, I'm just kind of wild and crazy fun. I'm gonna make my loop, I'm gonna fold this up, I'm gonna come down and make my swirl, because that's how I always do this pretty much. But then I'm gonna have one strand wrap around the back, the other strand is gonna come up by itself and make some cute little loops, alternating like that, and then wrap around the top and meet. They're gonna meet in the back, they're gonna come around here and make some big loops. So there's loops all over the place, craziness, wild, scarf it, and finish. So you have a whole bunch of insanity going on, and you'll love it. Can't emphasize how much you want to keep pushing very tightly against the stone as you're making each little curve and each little part.